outdoors, but I also happen to take photos for a living, sort of thing. Um, I start, I, I've been in Scouts since I was six, and that's how I sort of got into the outdoors. Um, did film and television at uni. Stepped away from that and then started working at an outdoor ed centre, Kindillan, uh, for a few years. And then I also, while I was there, made them a promotional video, um, which was okay at the time. Um, and then from there, I've progressed and sort of switched over from the outdoor education to photography and filmmaking for outdoor organisations, um, retail shops, uh, recreation providers, and uh, a lot of races as well. So triathlons, adventure races, and uh, things like that. Um, so I guess what I'm here to talk to you about is not to sell me, because I've never been very good at doing that. Um, not to say, go and get me as a photographer or, or anything like that, but also maybe just a bit about what you can do, some helpful hints to think about for you when you're, uh, I guess, taking your own photos or videos inside your organisation, um, and what you can do to, I guess, just things to think about um, in that regard. Uh, so, when I take a photo, I um, now try and take the perfect photo every time. It's just sort of natural at a race. Um, you have very limited time when you're running around a, a triathlon course trying to keep up with some of the competitors and cover it. Um, but things like well lit, nice exposure, you want the person to be in focus, um, you want it to be a really sharp, quick um, photo taken, so you want all those water droplets that are there to sort of be frozen in time and really cap capture that image. Um, so that's something that I'm looking for, um, as well as the framing, like not having too much dead space, but having the, the hero shot or the, the person filling the frame and making it really exciting. Um, that's a, that's a Kindillan shot, that one. Um, and also timing, timing my photos so that it's when the most, uh, I guess, exciting thing is happening in the shot. Um, <coughs> this photo was this weekend just gone. It's a photo of um, a lady, her name's Connie. She's uh, sponsored by her husband's shop, a River Dirty Pizza at Milton. Um, very nice pizza, you should go and try it. Um, <laughs> And <coughs> I was nearly going to um, click X on this photo, which means flag it as don't use, don't keep. And the reason being, you probably can't see it, but she's out of focus a little bit. And the background is, is in focus. Um, so it's a nice scenery shot of the background, and she's just a little bit out of focus. And part of me said, don't keep the photo, because it's, um, it's technically not the, the best. But another part of me goes, that's a pretty cool photo. Look where she is. She's mountain biking in the snowy mountains. Um, so this is Lake Kraken back near Jindabyne, Threadbow. And um, it made me realise it's the, it's the story you're, you're capturing, what's going on in the photo, that takes precedence sometimes over how technically good the photo is. And I think it's weighing up when it comes to your organisations um, what, it, like, what do I look for in a photo as a, as a photographer against what is my customer looking for in a photo. So I, I go and sell these photos and she might buy that photo and be completely stoked and not even realise that it's a little bit out of focus. But it's the fact that she can put that on her Facebook or whatever and show people, look where I was, look what I was doing. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is, is your story that's in your photo. And if I can give you a few little helpful hints to make it just that little bit better, um, you should know when you can take your own photos with a good story to sell and when maybe you just do need that extra little bit of help and get a professional person to come and help you out. And then that sort of slots in with the, um, what, what Michael was saying, when you need something for a newspaper, maybe you need something just that little bit better to capture the story. <clears throat> Oh, so that's, a, that's an example. That, that's a shot of me at a mountain bike skills park at the Snowy Mountains that they had there with a seesaw that you ride over and you go down. And I got a mate to take the photo who's, who's a bike rider and not a photographer. And the photo was a little bit out of focus, but I thought it was a good example of the roles reversed. I'm now the customer going, that's a pretty cool photo. I want to show people. I went, that's why I put it in. I want to show people I did this seesaw. It's really cool. And um, it doesn't really matter that it's a bit out of focus. So it's, 
it's the story and the, what I can talk to people about that moment that I remember that's really important to me. <clears throat> um, do I have time? For, yeah, I'll do it. <clears throat> so the video itself is really off topic. It's an example of the question is, are viral videos, why are they, are they technically good looking? And what would your answer be? Are viral videos that go viral on Facebook and social media, are they, are they technically good? No, but they're interesting. Um, unique, got something different about them, sometimes a little bit quirky. So I just want to play this one. It's one of my favourites that sprung to mind and I thought it's completely random, not, not really our industry at all, but it's got 23 million hits, so I thought I'd show it and you can sort of work out why you think it's got so many hits. <laughs> no. Oh, where's the sound? I think it was 23 million views, but why? Because <laughs> it's pretty funny. And um, <clears throat> I think it just goes to show that that's not the best actors, not even close to the best actors. Um, it's not the best video, not the best titles that spin up onto the screen or anything like that. It's just the fact that it's, it's interesting and a taxid taxidermy specialist isn't something that you'd think that many people in the world would have seen a, a promotional video for. So that's quite strange, I think. Um, <clears throat> so what's the first step to making your photos and videos a little bit more professional? When, when do you need a more professional look and what's the first step? Um, well, I'll, just, I'll try and summarise in two key categories what's most important if you're trying to take your own photos in-house um, for your organisation. Um, there's two things. But first, what is the difference between this photo and all the other photos I showed a little bit earlier that I'd taken at events? It is posed. It is full of brands. That's important. That's not actually what I was going for. But there's more than one person. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. There's more people. So the thing I'm, I'm, I'm going for here is getting people involved. So, um, and, and with that, getting people involved creates, whoops, creates energy. The more people you've got excited about something um, creates more energy, and energy is contagious and it spreads. Um, so a few f example photos. This one's from the weekend. When you're at an event where there's lots of people, I notice that people get really psyched up because there's so many people around that they feed off that energy. Um, so you've got a couple, even if it's just a couple of people um, who are having a fun time, you're just sort of looking at that photo post event, whether that's in the paper, whether it's just on Facebook or whatever medium it is, um, it really, you sort of get drawn into the moment a little bit more when you've got more people and you've got more energy in it. Um, so how can we get people inside or outside our, outside our organisation involved um, and how can we motivate our team and how can we motivate our customers? 
Um, I could tell you more if I hadn't left my notes on my desk. But <laughs> um, so things like getting people involved could be a simple competition. Um, or one of the favourite things I like doing is um, when I was an instructor is giving a camera to my group of kids and seeing what they could come up with. So you might find inside your organisation you've got either people working with you or people who come to you, customers, who might, might be good at taking photos, videos, or at least they're the ones who have more time than you in your, in, out in the field or whatever it is that you do. Um, if you're you know, behind an office a lot of the time, you've got people there you can use to create the energy and um, it's sort of, I guess it, maybe that's your role to motivate them to use more media, fo you know, cameras, whether it's about getting ca bot purchasing cameras for your organisation for people to use, your staff to use, um, and capture video or photos or anything like that. Um, GoPros are more commonly being used and bought by outdoor ed centres that I know of um, just for staff to use and take around with them. And yeah, I'd always lend out my camera to, to a bunch of kids when we're doing an activity and they'd sometimes come back with the most awesome shots because they're the ones having fun and they're amongst it and um, they're getting the reactions and that's feeding off all the other kids in the, in the group sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> next. Right. I'm going to show you a video and then we'll probably wrap up after that. Um, we'll fly through it. But this is a really good video that I watched a while ago um, of a guy and it's sort of to do with the whole energy bouncing off people sort of thing. So I'll just play it for you and have a quick chat after. Okay, before you guys even get started, I'm going to tell you what this video is all about. It is about energy. So I myself have to have energy, and the more energy I have, you guys as a viewer are going to have energy as well. So let's get started. We all will be covering the Holly Color Festival. Now what the Holly Color Festival is, it's a big... Whoops. ...celebration that they actually do in India, but they also celebrate in several other places in the world. So with this, they get color powder and they throw it everywhere. Now, a huge part of the videos that we shoot is all about energy. It's all about people having the time of their lives. So in order to capture that, me as a cinematographer or filmmaker has to also be having the time of my life. So if I go in there and I hold up the camera, let me give you an example. If I hold up the camera like this, and I'm like, okay, everyone, just be happy and, and get together. People aren't going to be happy and get together, you know? So they have to be stoked as well. So me as a filmmaker, I have to be having the time of my life and they have to be seeing that. So if I come in there and have a, yeah, guy, just totally rocking out, they're going to rock out as well. At least that's kind of the theory behind it. Now, me as a filmmaker, when I make fun of myself, um, it gives them permission as far as the person in front of the camera to make fun of themselves as well, and that comes across as so much more natural. So when I go in there, I am constantly making fun of myself. As you make fun of yourself, it gives them permission to make fun of themselves as well, and that comes across so much more natural. They like to see people having fun, but they like to see them having fun as who they really are. Um, so that's kind of the secret of the YouTube videos that we make, is we're having the time of our lives, or at least trying our best to have the time of our lives, depending on what's going on. And by us having the time of our lives behind the camera, they also are having the time of their lives. Anyone that's actually gone to a YouTube shoot or a film shoot with me knows that my voice is completely gone by the end of the day because I'm constantly screaming at the top of my lungs, just getting people super hyped up, and that really is what it comes down to as far as capturing people having the time of their life. So that's the tip of the day, is when you're filming people, don't be monotone. You have to be stoked. Stoked on life. And by doing that, they are also stoked on life. Alright, so that's pretty much the bulk of it. Let you know that we, there's one of those happening in April on the Gold Coast, and I mentioned to our cameraman when we were oh, yeah. shooting it, they were so peed off. Our camera's going to get all paint on it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they he, need that energy. He would have bought a new camera after that, surely. <laughs> um, so I thought about trying to replicate and get up here and say that, but that was, I can't be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's sort of the, the, I guess the basis of what I'm trying to say is getting people excited, energetic, and uh, you're going to get the reaction from people that you want to portray. Um, and I guess, actually I'll flick through because my slides will say this better than I will. Um, 
sometimes hiring a professional is just going to allow you to be that little bit more creative and that's, that's what's going to really help you. So you might have the ideas, the locations, the people, the events, things happening where you just need that little bit of outside energy to come in and, and help you out. Um, and this is just one I saw yesterday, I thought I'd grab off the internet. Um, just creative. Um, and there's a couple more as well. Just things to think about when it comes to your marketing um, and how you can just, you know, change it up a little bit. So the difference between try and triumph is a little umph. You know, it's just creative. It's something you might not think about if, when you go, let's put a picture from my phone on the, on the net and show everyone how our event went this weekend. You know, it's little captions like that that, that add that little you know, creative edge to it. And one um, event that's really, really good at that is Tough Mudder. Has, has anyone subscribed to them on Facebook at all? You'll see that <laughs> some, of their, some of their stuff is really, really motivational and um, pretty cool. A little bit offensive, look at that. <laughs> Swearing there, whoops. So that one's a good one. And this one's just for a bit of fun. I thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, just for a creative edge. Cool. Well, I might just wrap it up there for time. Um.